slept like a freaking baby. And I had a little bit too much champagne last night. Breakfast closes in 10 minutes. So I need to go and get some of that. But when I come back, we're gonna talk about attention to detail. Because it's all over this hotel. And it's made me think. So this is a boutique hotel, and I've had the pleasure of staying in a superior suite. Now, I'm not paying for this, and I'm not sponsored, but I did come here for work, and so I felt like I needed to take advantage of the situation. Now, someone said yesterday that um, either you like it and think the rooms are cool, or it's a little bit too weird. I am amongst the people who like it. Art Deco is not really my favorite style. Yeah, I don't want it in my own home. But I think it's very cool. It's giving like Gatsby, if that makes sense. I don't really stay in hotels all that much and very rarely actually am I fortunate enough to stay in a nice hotel. But one of the things I really like is the attention to detail. Because a lot of times when it comes to interior design, I feel like we often focus on the big furniture, you know? When you move into a new place and you're getting furniture, you usually focus on getting a sofa, kitchen table, chairs, a bed, those types of things. But through the years of being interested in interior design and furniture, I've reflected a lot upon what is it that makes me feel like a person has good taste. What is it that attracts me when I come into a house or a home or a hotel or whatever it is? And my conclusion to this question is that it's very often the little things that make me feel like I am in an environment of good design or good taste. Take this bed for instance. This bed frame has like fabric on the inside. First of all, I would like you to consider a fun bed frame next time you're getting a bed, because beds have become really boring. But what makes this room is honestly this bed. It's so cool. Both behind and in the front, there's fabric. And that specific detail makes this bed stand out. Take the phone, for instance. They've gone to the trouble of making the phone look like an old phone. It's not an old phone, but it's cool. I also really like the curtains and the fabric that they've used for all the pillows, the sofa, everything. There's such attention to detail and that for me is what gives the feeling of great interior design. Then I thought, how can this be useful for you and me? Because truth is, it is expensive. It's very expensive to buy all new furniture or old furniture for that matter. And so if you're not in, let's say, your forever home yet, or you are not really in a place where you can afford to buy all the stuff that you would like to buy to furnish your home the way that you would like to but you still really want to have good interior design I thought I would give you some tips on how you could get it without having to spend copious amounts of money on it now it is super important to remember that the way that you arrange furniture and combine, for instance, that specific lamp with that specific table, that is your taste. So you can have the same things as someone else, but the way that you compose it is what makes it your style. Now, what I'm talking about when it comes to attention to detail is perhaps, do you have pillows with piping? This pillow feels way more exclusive than my cheap IKEA pillowcases that I have at home, which I'm big plans on changing after staying here. Now what other small things could you change up in order to elevate your feeling of 
you know, having a put together home. Going to extremes, you could say that everything is design. And with that in mind, it leaves you a lot of opportunities to get creative. When it comes to decorative objects though, a lot of people tend to get it wrong, either by lack of intentionality or falling victim to commercial and mass-produced items. Bottom line is to find things that either has a story or that has meanings to you somehow. Whether that be vintage, objects inherited from family or friends, something that you collected on a trip, something you bought from a local artist, you know what I mean. By combining old and new stuff, you can avoid being stuck in a time period and larger pieces tend to seem more intentional and designed but avoid buying things just for the sake of buying things so you know stay away from any fast furniture brand that has the word home in their name the goal is to curate your space so it reflects you and who you are and not everyone else i think that tableware is such a great place to start when it comes to like upping your game a little bit and this is my personal goal in 2024 i'm not gonna lie my tableware is not that good which is why most of my examples are tableware related. I also fell down a bit of a rabbit hole on Pinterest looking for inspiration, so this is what we've got to work with. If you know me, it should come as no surprise that silver, chrome, and steel constantly repeat themselves in the object that I like. I think it's a color that complements both food and other textures and fabrics really well. For instance, I really like the cylinder line designed by Arne Jakobsen for Stelton and any product by LSE to be honest. In regards to plates, I feel like you could go in two directions, either a matching set or a random selection of different plates. Now, even though the selection is random, try to be somewhat intentional about it. You see, plates are the perfect objects to complement and contrast, so try to find similar colors, but also don't be scared of contrasting colors or textures. I also really love to combine these two by having a base of neutrals which combines really well with vintage or more quirky options. One of my favorites is the Japanese brand Hasami Porcelain. Clean lines, organic textures and multifunctional designs define the brand's tableware. Another tableware accessory that I like are salt and pepper mills and I'm currently really into these Pichot pepper mills. I think they look so nice, they're heavy duty and to be honest they spice up any, any table. While you're working on your tableware, you could also consider getting a nice tablecloth. Now having one nice tablecloth instead of like a wax cloth I'm not even sure that's a cloth. In Norwegian we just call everything duke. Okay, I didn't finish this thought, let's move on. There's so much cool flatware and cutlery to choose between, so the only thing holding you back is honestly your lack of inspiration. I'm of course a big fan of a sharp silver or chrome look, but if you'd like a more mid-century option, I highly recommend the Norwegian brand Skaugum. They have a lot of different handles to choose between, like teak or uh, colored plastic. Now, if you use chopsticks and you don't already have a chopstick rest, you should get on that immediately. This is also an option for spoons and knives, which I think are a super cute way to present your flatware. Another thing you could consider is getting interesting butter knives. I'm currently very into these butter knives by Savre Paris or Savre Paris. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they're super fun and there's so many options in colors and patterns. And I will definitely be getting some of these. I'm a huge fan of the little dishes. So a butter dish. Uh, something to put salt and pepper in. One that you could perhaps put on the table. I have one with a little spoon, which I love. A good butter dish is very nice to have both in terms of practical and aesthetic reasons. Either to store your butter, but it also looks much nicer on the table when serving it with other food. Something similar would be a cheese cover or a glass dome to keep your cheeses fresh. I really like this one by Benny Motzfeldt. Also glassware, getting different like interesting glasses is also a really good way to stand out. There's so much interesting glass and often this is very cheap secondhand. For instance, I bought these little red ones and I think they're originally meant to have desserts in them. I think they're super cute. Actually, I have to check out 11 minutes ago, so I actually can't keep talking. This might have been a short video, but good luck upping the small things in your home and thank you so much for hanging out and i'll catch you next time